Hey everyone, Garrett here from Tate and Yoko. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a great episode for you. Of course, we're gonna talk about our fits, warehouse update. We're gonna go into a little bit of denim care. We have a very special feature, a little factory tour, much, much more. We got the word of the week and um, a new special prize uh, for some of you word of the week people. But uh, let's get straight into it. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like the channel and subscribe. As usual, we're gonna get uh, Vinny's fit first. Vinny, what are you wearing today? Howdy, howdy. Today, we got the smart jacket, the Sashiko double gauze. Don't mistake it for a Band-Aid. Anyways, um, yeah, so brought this out cause I was wearing my, I was wearing a bomber jacket today and I was like, ooh, how could I switch it up for the fit check? So we got the smart jacket. You can treat it like a bomber jacket, wear like a hoodie underneath, you know what I'm saying? Our very own black heavy, not heavyweight, but Terry knit. What's going on down here? Oh yeah, we got we got the crop. I, <laughs> I like hemmed this myself because I want to accentuate my legs. I'm a short guy. I want to have an illusion that like I have long legs that, you know, I really don't. I'm all torso, no legs. Um, but yeah, by hemming my shirt, my hoodie, our French Terry hoodie, um, makes my legs look longer. And we got the King of Lords with the Tims. So yeah, if you, you know, have a startup in Silicon Valley, get yourself a smart jacket. All right, Vinny, let me give you the camera back. That is, that is some great styling advice from Vinny. It's true, everything is relative. So the shorter your body looks, the longer your legs look and vice versa. So if you are not super tall, you definitely wanna to try to make your legs look a little bit longer, maybe pull your pants up, get that higher rise, and don't wear anything that's too, too long. All right, so starting with my fit, usually I'm wearing a hat or a watch cap or something, but today we have decided to go hatless. So no hats today. This is uh, my hair at the moment. Just got it cut a couple uh, weekends ago. Of course, I have my shot 618 horse hide. This is kind of my go-to around the office leather jacket. It's still actually quite cold outside. I think it's negative four today. It's been snowing the past couple of days. And so it's a little bit chilly. So I'm wearing this around the office. I have my uh, black circular knit tee, black buffalo belt. I'm still fading my... Uh, these are the Dirty Fade True Guys. I got the Benchmade 940 in the pocket as usual. And on the feet, I have my Wesco Job Masters. These are actually soaking wet right now. My feet are pretty wet because I soaked the, soaked the boots this morning. There was a squeak in the left boot, so I'm trying to remedy that with a little bit of a soak. And uh, yeah, oh, we were also gonna talk about what we do in our jeans, what we like to do for our hobbies. So um, I like to to climb in my jeans. If you follow my Instagram uh, at w the Wizard of Thirty Two Ounce, you'll see that I do a lot of bouldering in these, and you'll see right here that I'm getting some nice fades from the knee barring and uh, climbing there. So that's what I like to do in my jeans. Justin, come on over, show us your fit. Tell us what you do in your jeans. Alrighty, how do you do? Um... So, kind of like Vinny, I'm wearing the same similar top. Also, no hat today, no cap, none of that today. Um, for the sweater, I'm wearing the same, almost the same thing as Vinny. I'm wearing the crew neck in black, heavyweight Terry. Um, he's wearing the hoodie, I'm wearing the crew neck. I have mine not cut because also, unlike Vinny, I am all legs. Uh, I don't have much of a torso, so I'm wearing mine a bit longer to make me look a bit more human. Uh, I have my belt hook, as always. With my, you know, making a famous keychain. Love it. I got my solid black salvage strong guys and my, uh, you know, my 991 New Balances. Where did you get those? At Winners, dude. At Winners. You gotta go. If you guys, um, like, if you, I don't know what the equivalent is in the US. In Winners, we have like Canada. Uh, in Canada, we have like Winners. We have like Marshalls. Do we have TJ Maxx? Or is that a business? I don't know. Who knows? We have winners. Winners is a great place to get shoes. There's some great stuff. These are like the made in UK ones. They're really great. They're like 80 bucks. Highly suggest. Uh, but going on to like what we uh, do in our jeans. Now, I do a lot of stuff. Um, I skateboard. I skateboard in my jeans. I skateboard in my uh, Vulgar 3s quite a bit. Um, I bike in my jeans. Uh, I know Terry also cycles, so I think he cycles in a pair of his jeans, his jorts. 
Um, I did a lot of stuff. I also worked for a friend of mine's father who's a contractor. I've done construction in my jeans in my Vulgar 3s. Um, you know, I do a bunch of stuff. Whatever I can do in my jeans, I'll do in them. That's all for me. I'm going to hand it over to, uh, hand it over to Terry. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be me right now. So, uh, just like the hello, welcome back to another exciting and a thrilling episode of This Week in Tap and Yoko. We're going to talk about my little fit check first, then we'll get into this. So, you know me, I like to start from the bottom up. So, as always, my beloved Jim Green African Rangers here. We get a lot of miles, but today, oh yes, today of all days here, we got something a little different. These are my raw cotton canvas in all of the weird guys. I've actually had these for quite a bit since they came out, I think a year and a bit ago now. And they've been for the wash a few times. So they got that kind of like, um, they have a kind of like a white marbling here. They don't really fade. They kind of like fade a little bit to white and the color comes off. It's kind of a nice diluted tone after you wear them. Um, and I have the circling it here, tea and navy, but you may have noticed something a little bit different over here. Um, they're not held up by my magnificent uh, veg tan belt, which you all know and love here. I think it's a little bit of a DIY suspender operation over here. This is just something I custom rigged myself, not something that we offer right now at the store yet. But um, let me know what you think about this. I find that suspenders are actually the ultimate comfort hack there. Uh, I have a pair of bike bibs and it's great for letting it all just hang out, if you know what I mean. Very comfortable. Uh, no need here to trim the bushes to make the tree look taller. I'm just kind of going for a natural look over here. <laughs> and yes, also no hat. Let the sun bathe down onto my body and top follicles. Uh, that's right, got the watch. Y'all know I love this, the G-Shock here. Much beloved, been through many battles. Same battery, over 10 years. I've been doing it way before it was cool. I oh, am H-O. Show off this detail. Look at this. Look at his little rivet there on, that is you know, brassing or polishing there. You can see you got the antique brass on this side, which it looks pretty much brand new. And then over here, look how shiny it's become. So these do the, these jeans do patina and they will kind of fade in the wash as well. I don't know if we have any more of these at all, but they definitely are kind of one of our most dynamic, I think, canvas pants. Yes. And they're actually, they're actually quite a robust pair. So I've actually, um, uh, Speaking of what I like to do in my jeans, I've definitely gotten up to no good in the back 40, so to speak. I've definitely spent some time outdoors. Uh, we have some family property way out there, kind of like north of Kingston. And I like to kind of bounce around in the woods, maybe do a little bit of hiking, maybe do a little boating, uh, maybe go after some two-legged game with feathers. <laughs> <laughs> with feathers. Okay, so that's it for me. Before we uh, switch over to the main meat and potatoes of this show, I want to bring in Max over here because he's got a really cool fit. Hello, hello. Today my fit, I mean like two weeks ago, I'm wearing the tatami Canadian Japanese tuxedo. So I'll start from the bottom. I get uh, my converse that uh, just fuse the fit together. Like makes, I, I feel like the shoes are the most important. If you wear like unmatching top and bottom, it doesn't, it doesn't mind, like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. As long as the shoes look nice, you can pull it off. You can pull off anything. That's <laughs> my uh, fashion advice. Uh, what you shouldn't do, though, is never button this button. Usually, they don't, I cannot button it, but today I was able to, and, and the, the last yeah. button, too. Uh, That's what I like to do, too. It's much more comfortable, like this. So, um, yeah, I got the tatami jacket also. It's been washed once. My uh, my pants um, still only worn three times so far, but you can see that there's a slight difference because it's been soaked, but it's barely visible. Okay, that's it. All right, thank you, Maxim. All right, thank you very much, Max. So we're just gonna give you a little bit of a quick update to what's kind of going on here over at Tate and Yoko. And what we have going on over here is that we have our spring collections walking out the door. That's right, people are very excited to um, get their hands on some of the new spring offerings that we're offering. So I'm talking a lot about our recent releases in the past two weeks, the Left Hand Twill Sky Blue Edition, uh, the Monet jeans, as I like to call them, also known as Spring Garden, and some of the uh, new Aloha shirts and tops, not to mention, and we definitely can't forget that you guys went bananas for those new heavyweight Wonder Looper tees. I'm not too sure if they count as spring or winter weather, a little bit of that you know, 
All year round. All year round. You got a super heavy core, but then there's a t-shirt. So, you know, you get a little bit of both. So I like those. But I'm going to show you off one of the um, shirts that we're really moving over here. And I noticed that there's not much left. I got one in the box over here. This is kind of a cool pattern here. This is the vintage PK in the accru or a raw color over here. And uh, you got some pretty cool looking flower designs. And they are just, you know, woven right in there and just looking beautiful. So we actually have this in the Aloha shirt over here with a pocket. But we also have a camp collar shirt, which is kind of a bit of a higher neckline, no pocket, uh, more traditional ladies fit. This guy has been proven really popular as well as our seasonal releases. Those are done really well, especially those light blue jeans. But don't worry, watch this space if you like lighter colored denim because we got another couple of releases coming out that is definitely going to put some smiles on some hungry jean-loving faces. And the Lord of Nips. And the Lord of Nips. Oh, I can't forget that. I want to make, make a special point to mention um, the Lord of Nips. So I think last week I had a little bit of a stealth restock of some Lord and Neps. We basically, for mysterious reasons, we found a couple of Lord and Neps lying around the warehouse. We put them online. We didn't say anyone, but you guys found them. You like super sleuths out there. You found these jeans and you definitely snapped them right up and they evaporated like so much morning dew. And I bet it's because you probably had that notify button on the website. So on our website for Tap and Yoko, if something is not there, you missed your size, you slept in through the release, you know, or spicier than you imagined and you just couldn't grab a pair of jeans that you were desperately hoping to get, please make sure to click out the uh, send me an email, the notification button if it comes back in stock. Because even though these are always limited releases, we do one production, sometimes things happen behind the scenes and you may get a second chance there. I'm going to talk about things like the Lord and Ep. Uh, we also have the 15th anniversary. We got a couple of units came back and even like a sprinkling a gentle sprinkling of a JoJo's kind of came back in some various sizes. So there's always the chance, never say never. Don't forget to use the notify me button on the product web page if you missed the boat on that one. Excellent. So I'm going to handle off. Oh yeah. And mandatory like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe our videos. It really makes the things work. You know how it works. It just keeps us encouraged. It makes us happy and it does help videos like this keep on getting made. It keeps the machine moving. So thank you very much. Anyway, onward to Mr. Garrett. Yes. All right. Thanks, Terry. We have uh, a little segment here. We're going to talk about denim care. Um, of course, this is kind of an ongoing topic. There's always a lot of, you know, misunderstanding. There's people online saying this and that. But we're just going to kind of talk about our opinions, what we do, what we find works. Um, and to start with denim care, I always like to tell people that Denim care starts before you even purchase the jeans. So before you wash and before your first wash, before your hemming, before your first repair, you can already think about your denim care. And I think one of the first things and the most important things is to think about the fit and the sizing of your jeans. So one of the things that really impacts the longevity of uh, your garments is going to be the fit and the sizing. So for myself, I like to fit my jeans either, uh, I'd say like a standard fit. Um, so there's maybe just a little bit of room in the waistband or I go for a slightly looser fit. And the reason is because, I'm uh, sorry, slightly looser size. And the reason is because when uh, things are tight, they're very snug, especially with jeans, there's a lot of pulling, there's a lot of kind of stretching and that puts a lot more wear and tear on the garment, especially around the crotch area and all the seams. So that's going to cause the jean to wear out faster. So I'd say go for a, like a standard fit. Um, it can be not, not snug, but just kind of fits perfect in the waist or a little bit looser. And then secondly, in terms of fit, you want to be choosing a fit that matches the shape of your body. For myself, I have the, the true guy, which is a straight fit. But uh, in general, like if you're a slim guy, then of course you could go for a skinny fit. If you're uh, a more athletic build, then you want to go for something with a little bit more room in the top block. But in general, just try to find a fit that kind of reflects your shape. And that's going to help also with the longevity and the overall care of your jeans. So once you've kind of established that, you can you can think more about the washing and, and repairs and all that down the road. But I just want to get your guys' opinions on like how you guys size your jeans, what fits you like. Uh, do you wear your jeans loose, tight? Do you stretch them out? Like, what do you do, Terry? Yeah, so absolutely. I think Garrett really brings up a good point, which is often overlooked is that it starts right at the moment of um, purchase and choosing a size. 
So in terms of uh, keeping things comfortable for me, um, I don't bike as much as I used to, but I still have relatively larger thighs. That makes um, some fits hard to pick. So I always kind of like, I go for that limiting factor. Maybe the waist is, you know, not the limiting for you. Maybe your thighs are limiting. Make sure your thighs are happy too. So in this case, I went for a size that was more appropriate for my thighs. And, you know, now I can uh, get away with it. We love these suspenders and I'm just living in comfort there. So uh, normally I used to wear those true guys. They're great for big boys with a little bit of uh, meat in their legs. But also you can kind of play around some tag sizes, but definitely get them on there. Check the measuring charts and size for that. Maybe whatever you might be surprised is the limiting factor. But another thing I want to kind of point out in terms of jeans there, um, don't overthink the care too much there. Uh, these are jeans at the end of the day, like these were always, these are workwear. They always have been workwear. There's no really right or wrong way to do it. I just want to like let people relax a little bit. There's no denim police out there. And I think this is an understandable sentiment because a lot of you might be like me, get very geeky, very nerdy about doing things. You want to make sure you're doing things right. You want to make sure your things doing correct. You know, I'm going to check the online forms, make sure you're like, you know, kind of following all the right protocol as if you're wearing like a suit to a ball. But that's not really, really the case. And even if you do kind of goof up a little bit there, maybe you like threw it in the dryer or like, you know, you mixed epoxy on your legs. That's still part of the journey of your raw denim. It's going to be there as your canvas of life. So there you go. That's kind of like my two cents. And just to repeat again, I always wash my jeans, kind of cold, inside out, hang dry. And um, I hang them up at the end of the day. That's a little, little top. So when I'm finished with my jeans, this is something that my, everyone might do. Sometimes you might just whip them off on the floor. Sometimes you might wear them all the way straight to bed, maybe <laughs> even into bed, you know, no judge. If you're denim in bed, let us know. <laughs> let us know, I guess. Put yeah. a comment down yeah, below. Yeah, but put a comment down we below. We know you're out there. <laughs> yeah, if you wear the jeans to bed. I was always told not to do that because it makes you a bit chilly. But yeah, I, anyway, when I take off and I swap to my indoor wear, I actually have a little hook on my wall where I kind of hang my jeans and kind of like helps the air out because like humidity is kind of, um, you know, the enemy of like fresh smells up there. So it's kind of this after a long day, I'm hanging up in the wall there, getting a little bit of breeze. Then it does help them stay fresher for longer. And then if you can smell them, wash them. Don't worry about it. Yes, exactly. Justin, oh, how do you size your jeans and what do you like oh, to wear? I knew you were gonna... Okay, cool. So um, I do wear the strong guy. I size mine a little bit bigger. I'm a pretty thin guy. Uh, I do I do wear a couple of sizes. I mean, I usually, I say I would usually wear a 30, um, any given size really. I wear a 32. I, I'm always looking for something a little bit bigger. That's generally how it's always been. I wear a 32 strong guy. As for care, I'm gonna take a lot of things from what Terry said. Terry made a lot of really good points. Um, the first one being, these are jeans. Um, you can take care of them however you want to, and they're 9.999 out of 10 times, they're gonna turn out and be just fine. You can continue to love them. A second thing, not as much indigo will come off your jeans when you wash them as you think. People think they wash them. I work in the store. I talk to a lot of people that come in the store, we exchange ideas, we talk about our experiences, and people think that, or people who come in for the first time looking to buy a pair of jeans, they think their jeans are gonna like they run their hands across them and they're gonna turn blue. That's not the case. Uh, this is all very, this is relatively slow fading denim. It's gonna take a long time. You wash it the first time, it's not all gonna come off. Don't worry about that. So that being said, feel free to wash your jeans when you feel you need to wash your jeans. That's my biggest, uh, that's the biggest thing I'm gonna say. That's how I feel, that's my opinion. Um, I wash mine pretty frequently, maybe like, you know, once every month, maybe more than once a month, depending on what I'm getting up to. In the summer, it gets kind of humid. Maybe your jeans might get a bit smelly, throw them in the wash. Or in the tub, I rinse mine, I soak them, I hang dry. That's all for me. That's my opinion. Um, yeah, Vincent, you have an opinion? Does oh, Vincent have an opinion? Don't eat like two lunches. That's one. <laughs> two, my opinion is if you repair your jeans, you get like a patch, just go and be like, just go like maybe a hundred times back over with the stitching just to reinforce them. Because mine always break twice in the in the crotch area. Um, what else? I think that's it for me. I'm wearing a black shirt. Red, red. Oh, it's red all over it. I don't know where this came from, actually. Oh, it's folding shirts in the store. Um, got a little seven, uh, you know, seven millimeter brown belt. 
Dude, I'm just. Are you out of breath? <laughs> dude, my stomach hurts so bad. I ate so much. What did you eat? I ate a sandwich, salad, empanada, and a poutine. Young Vinny bought me. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> we have the natural indigo selvage groovy guys, the Sambezis. Sponsor us. <laughs> Please. Sponsor. Well, big. I mean, why not? Um, and then these are uh, opinions regarding like what? Care, gene care? Gene care. Yo, man. Gene care. Soap or no soap? Whatever you want. Don't listen to people who tell you you have to do soap. Don't listen to the people who tell you uh, you have to. I don't know. Whatever. It's your choice. Your if jeans. If you want to wear them for every single day for five years straight, you can do that. Yeah, your jeans. If you want them to stink, you can do that. Sure. That's what he's trying to say. That's my yeah, takeaway. Yeah. Go back to Vincent. Yeah. Um, another thing. Make sure, man, that you're... If you're... Listen. If your jeans look like this, I promise you they're too small. I promise you. <laughs> hey, when I got these jeans. Whoa, whoa, is that a bit of button poking through the. Yes. Oh my God. We're, I'm saving this for uh, actually a fade review. So don't look too hard. <laughs> it, it's always like this. Listen, when I, when I was a slimmer man myself, <laughs> maybe about 20 pounds slimmer, um, this is how they sat down. Okay, when, you're, when you gain weight, this happens and it's normal guys. All you have to do is get a size that fits you better. That's it. <laughs> There's no stretching out. Like th these are stretched. Okay. Look, can you see that? Boom. Still too tight. I know when I sit down, you know, just say it's, everything's well wrapped. Okay. <laughs> That's all. That's all. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I guess I'll kind of wrap up uh, the washing. So of course, our official recommendation is to please cold wash inside out and hang to dry. Of course, um, that's going to lead to the least amount of shrinkage. Sometimes, of course, you will get a little bit of shrinkage, but they pretty much will stretch back out. Um, but again, like everyone said here, pretty much they're your jeans, so you can do with them what you wish. And usually for my jeans, depending on how they fit, these ones I've just been cold washing and hanging to dry. But for a lot of my other jeans, they're either a little bit bigger for me or I've sized up. And in that case, usually I will do a hot wash inside out and then run them through Jeez. the dryer. And that can actually be a little bit rough on the leather patch. So that's why I normally don't recommend it. And they will shrink, of course. Um, so, you know, if you do get a dried out leather patch, then there are some options, which is a great segue into Terry. Yes. What do you do with a dried out leather patch? You gotta hit it with a BECO. That's, <laughs> that's right, definitely. Like I like to, before I wash the jeans, I will give it a little bit of like an ablative coating of um, protective wax there. And then after, definitely once the leather has dried out, I'll hit it again with another layer of wax or oil. I use BECO, it's what we sell over here. It's made in Canada, right here in Quebec. It's all organic, but um, you know, a nice wax will do. But pick her up yourself, a little tin of BECO. If you want to look after your leathers, your woods, or any kind of thing that came from a tree or an animal. Yeah, yeah. Mmm, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells so good. It does smell good. A walking stick? You could absolutely wax your walking stick. My Gandalf stick. If you pipe. want. Yes. I could so wax if you want to wax your stick, stick yeah. or your skin, definitely try out some of this lovely bee seal over here. We've actually been moving pretty well. I'm really happy how this has gone. It's a little bit of a, uh, you know, passion project for adjusting myself over here, but we're happy that you guys are snapping them up. Anyway, I think that brings us to a special section. We're going to do a little bit of a transition over here. We're going to go away to the factory. So away to the factory. And welcome to our cute little factory here in Montreal. Uh, it's part of the naked and famous group here. And it's the same building where we have Tate and Yoko. So uh, I'd just like to show you guys around that little factory, show you a couple of machines that are stand out to me personally that I think are fun and cool. And uh, I can just give you guys a tiny little peek behind the curtain, show you the magic of where a lot of this uh, delicious denim gets manufactured right here in Quebec, Canada. So I was gonna start over here. Uh, I got a couple of people with me, but let's gonna show off. We just have some simple here. We don't do like the heavy production here. We're just gonna do some more limited runs and sometimes some prototyping, some smaller production. So that's why it's a little bit smaller. Uh, everyone's gone home from the day. It's gonna be quite noisy during like peak production hours. As you can imagine, all these machines going makes quite a racket. So we got a couple of uh, rivet and button machines over here. These ones are really convenient for doing things quickly by hand and you can swap out different styles very easily. Not much uh, get up and go. Uh, over here on my right, 
Uh, I'm not too sure the proper name. I just call this the turbo presser for doing <laughs> the turbo presser for some real heavy duty ironing. We've got some kind of real nasty, powerful irons over there. And over here, we have sewing machines of plenty, but I want to show you a particularly cool machine that I think you guys will really get a kick out. It's my personal favorite. It makes a lovely noise. So come over here, Vinny. I want to show you this reel, this reel, this lovely old lady, this antique here, this Reese buttonhole machine, this reel, uh, no, this piece of work here, right here, made in the USA, uh, working hard every day here to make really, really cool buttons in all of our jeans over here. This one's a real antique, so I'm just going to actually give you guys a quick little demo to make sure I got it right here. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to insert my. Uh, this, of course, is, you may recognize this from your jeans here. This is the uh, buttonhole receptacle, not a technical term. Okay, I got it in there. I want to lock down my thing. And then probably want to stand over here on my right here, being able to really get this in. And I want you to listen to the lovely sound that this makes. I love that there. And there you go. That's the back side. It's the front side. And now you can put a button through there. And I want to show you guys one more time, but this time I want to show you the, um, I just want to show you the mechanism there. See if you can kind of get in there and see this really cool. This is what makes the race machine so special. See if you can see this thing kind of spinning around because it is an absolute hoot. And I'm just going to go one more time for you. I love that. And that's that. There we go. We got two buttons upside down, back to front. So thank you very much. This is a really, really cool relic and you know we work hard to keep the old ways alive here and that's kind of the theme here of naked and famous denim uh, we do a lot of work to make sure that these machines are running and kind of making jeans the way they used to so that was the reese buttonhole machine my favorite lovely sound cool action and a, a little scary it's definitely a little scary it is not super user friendly it will eat your fingers if you're not careful so we're going to walk a little bit around here i'm just going to kind of come this way over here we got all kinds of sewing machines over here a lot of familiar things you got with all the brands that you are familiar with here a lot of uh, vintage machines here i just want to kind of show you our cutting table got some fabrics over here uh of course the cutting table here is where we cut fabric right so it comes in these nice rolls big rolls these big bolts of denim if it's salvage, of course, it's only going to be a certain length wide, which is one of the reasons it's so expensive and special. They don't make it any wider. It comes in one length. We have them here. This one, this one's a little machine that we are quite proud of here. Check out this bad boy. This is an actual cutting tool. Crazy sharp little reciprocating blade over there. And this nice little wolf made in the USA. Cool little cutter. This guy is a real piece of work. <laughs> They've cut things pretty well. We have some uh, top secret not really. We got some samples over here. You can kind of see how it looks like. Uh, if you look over the table here, all these um, kind of cut uh, fabrics over here, which will be ready to be turned from flat into three-dimensional trousers to cover your two legs. That's exactly what they're there for. So we're going to come over here to another impressive and scary machine. Again, I don't know the official proper name for this. Call it the call Super this Sucker. The Turbo Sucker. <laughs> for reasons you'll soon got, understand. Got. Um, Again, this one kind of scares me a little bit, but it's really cool. It serves a really cool purpose. This is basically the high speed pant inside out machine. So I'm going to give it a little turn on over here. Wait, wait, turn it off. You got to explain why we're standing on the side here. Oh yeah, don't stand in front. <laughs> but if you have a lot of like half-made jeans and that's what we use them for as part of the production process a lot of half-made jeans it does a great job of turning inside out and of course you can just helps us press these nice really clean selfish lines i know this is what you guys kind of go crazy for this is an old sample pair of okam spares a particularly nice fabric and so this is what the turbo sucker does we'll come back to that guy <laughs> later over here so i just want to show you off what's another really special machine ah the union special so what do we got over here? This, oh man, look at this lovely old lady. So if you know, you know, 
Let me see if we get, is there a serial number in there? Let's see the worn out logo on the, the side. Worn out logo there. Man, if this old girl could talk of the amount of hems she has done, it would just blow your mind. So this is our special little hemming station. If you request hemming at Tarpin Yoko, it gets done here. No exception. It gets, happens here. It all happens right here on this machine. We got everything you need to go on. We have a lovely uh, person who works very, very hard here. Kind of really made it their own zone there because it's hard work hemming jeans, especially heavyweight jeans. It is brutal and difficult. That's why we have this, this hammer. This is not a disciplined hammer. This is actually a hammer. We use, you have to use a hammer to knock down the hems on these really thick, thick, thick jeans. So if you're doing a pair of elephants, 20 ounce, or heaven forbid, a 23 ounce pair of king of slubs or something, that is hard, hard work to squeeze the machine. So you can kind of really knock it down the hammer. And she's just working hard every day. And you can tell that there. we got the Tiger Bomb over here. Um, you know, all kinds of things over here. we got the Prime to stay hydrated because it is a brutal, <laughs> it is a difficult, difficult job here at the heavy machine here. Customizations. Yeah, some customizations there. A little custom pillow there. Just a lot of things. Just like, you know, like, you know this machine sees a lot of love and a lot of use every single day. This one gets used and gets used really hard. So these are kind of like the stars. The stars of our show here, the stars of the factory there. So yeah, that's just a real quick um, informal tour. Just gonna show you what's what, some of the cool machines that we have over here uh, at uh, Naked and Famous in our Montreal factory. And I thought you guys might enjoy. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, let us know. You know, if you wanna see a deep dive on a special machine, maybe start to finish on a hem, or maybe somehow you know, a little bit more technical stuff. We have people here who love to get technical and there's some serious super nerds who can really geek out about machines and fabrics. So definitely let us know. And I think that's it. So uh, I'm gonna now gonna transition back to the annex. <laughs> and we're back from the factory. That was a lovely trip. Uh, I hope you saw the part of all the machines. That was my favorite bit. <laughs> all right. So yes, this leads me straight into uh, a really fun part of the day, which is the uh, pick of the day. I have a pick of the day right over here. Come with me, Vinny. Walk over here to the desk where I have a special, special pick of the day. Already um, kind of a prop picked over here. So this one's going all the way out to, uh, oh, Victoria Island in BC. Got a lot of BC boys on the team over here. And this to a Morley. And uh, Morley has provided us with a lovely little um, couple of bars related to the word of the week, which was Quinn Kung's. Queen Kung's, of course, is an arrangement of five points, a bit of a, and one with one point in each corner, like a square. So imagine like the uh, the number five on a six sided dice. That's exactly what Queen Kung's looks like. And he gave us a great little uh, set of bars over here, just about um, denim on denim. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'm just gonna say congratulations on your order. Uh, they got a lovely pair of these, very seasonal, very seasonal. I'm gonna show it off there. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh. Straight to the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we cut that out? Yeah, no, they, Bezos, they, Bezos that is going to fix that one and Bezos, post. Keep that right. in. Who do these jabronis think I am? Steven Spielberg? <laughs> just want to show off here this very summery left hand twill in a very bright sky blue edition over here to go to spring. So it's excellent choice. So got one of these, and of course, to kind of compare and contrast, they also got the regular left hand twirl, which I'll leave in the bag. You guys all know that one very well. It's the same thing, but different. Why? Um, wow, he's going double left hand twirl. Double left hand twirl. Put in order. Yeah, two left hand twirls do not make a right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and for your amazing choice of orders, we're going to give you one of our now world famous um, little denim totes over here. So you can just kind of tote your cool left hand twirl street cred all around looking at this bag it is a right hand twill so so kind of settle you out in that direction so enjoy your bags enjoy your jeans and i just want to say for the next word of the week we're doing a special little promotion so come over here then i just want to show i'm not going to spoil the whole thing over here Sorry. but we got a couple of friends over in japan and they've made this cool zine over here magazine independent one a zine a zine let us know how you pronounce it this one's called indigo zine and uh, just think run by a couple of really good friends of Bayside and Visa. And um, yeah, this is basically kind of independent. It's actually beautiful. It's done in nice paper, it's all in color. And there's a wonderful centerfold of uh, Mr. Garrett and myself, plus some friends from around the world, including our New York store. So special promotion. First five people who write in the comments for this next coming orders, starting from today, the first five will get one of those cool zines, the indigo zine, they're gonna get one. So first five people, make sure that you are first in line. 
to get one. They're highly, highly limited. They're really, really cool. I think you'll enjoy them and um, it'll help you brush up on your Japanese. I'm sure my need a little bit of a warm up. Which brings us to the final step of the day. How do you do that? Well, you put the special word of the week in the comment section of your order and who put, who put this there? <laughs> And you put the special word of the week in the comment section of your order and you shall receive, you shall receive a lovely keychain from us. You shall receive some extra stickers, maybe a little hand drawn note or picture by us and you'll be entered to one of the prizes, which who knows what it might be. It changes every week and things are different. We got, we're talking, we're talking over here. So the, with this week's word over here, I have a special one here. I've consulted the oracles and the oracles say the word of the week is Murmuration. So put that word in the comment section of your order and you shall be entered to win a special little prize from us. And if you don't win that prize, don't worry because you're still going to get a cool little keychain. Let's see one of them keychains right before we just sign out for the rest of the day. Just remind people where they are. Ooh, oh, is go. that right? Yeah, there we go. There you go. Skin on skin, the naked and famous denim keychain. It's a nice thick piece of a veg tan leather. Look at that thickness. Mm, soak up some nice V seal to the <laughs> If you want to know there. Yeah, that'll look great hanging off your keychain or whatever you can attach it to. So that uh, brings us to the end of the show. A huge thank you for this extra special, extra long, mega fun edition. As always, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who engages with us on social media, comments, orders, whatever. We love you all. And just keep on being kind and friendly to everyone you meet. Thank you. Keep on, keep it on. Bye bye.